Assalamu alaikum. Kevkum. And I'm here to tell you a story. A story that's been told thousands, if not millions of times. In different versions, of course, but this is my story. And this is the story of my journey as an entrepreneur. Two, three years ago, I couldn't wait to graduate from medical school, put on that white lab coat, the Samaa, Gulek Diktor. Mabtut. Jit. I graduated and while I was waiting for my employment I started to think about the medical profession or my profession the military feel going up the ranks from foot soldier to general from house officer thank you from house officer to consultant or professor type and I was brought up in a household when alhamdulillah my father is one of the best pediatricians in Sudan. And my mother is a PhD holder. So you can imagine, in no, from day one, we are stressed to be somebody, to accomplish, to make a difference, to be an entity type. I started to think about the thousands of medical students they every year. طيب. How was I going to be? How was I going to be somebody? How was I going to accomplish something? بالعكس, يعني more importantly, when was I going to be somebody? يعني بعد ثلاثين سنة, in twenty years, thirty years. Then I started to think, طيب, could I make a difference? Could I do something بجد? ولا إلا بعد ثلاثين سنة in thirty years time? I think when am I going to be somebody is the question that every entrepreneur ولا هو رواد الأعمال ask himself with the spark بتبدأ طيب أتمنى لكم القصة بعد ما تخرجت after I graduated I started to work my we my father owns a small pediatric hospital in Omdurman فا I thought إنه أنا to help him out and work with him a little bit what happened was my father, by the way, is a neonatologist, so he works with babies from zero to 28 days. This is his line of work. So I remember the day the idea of Sudamed came to me. It was a normal day. I was standing next to the reception when this man walks in. He's carrying a small baby, maybe seven, eight days old. He looks relieved. He goes up to the reception and asks, when can he meet my father? This is 1 p.m., kiddo. To his dismay, he was told that my father's clinic only works at night. So this man that had traveled more than 50 kilometers with a sick seven-day-old seven was told that he had to wait another six hours. Unfortunately, Allah, I don't know what happened to that man or his son. Lakin, I started thinking, why was there no service like this in Sudan? Why was there no, no phone that I could call or a website that I could go on to? and check when Dr. Muhammad Khair was working to check where I could find a certain drug or a certain test a feeling nagged at me we all know in Sudan there is a lack of basic information mafia kalam lakin what I thought was could a medical directory be done could I actually get all this information and actually present it to people just like you and me type I'm feeling that nagged for weeks. And I think the موضوع ده I can't get it out of my head. Finally, I sat down and I wrote a business plan. Suddenly I was pushed into a world of marketing, budgets, income forecast. يا خنا دكتور بعرف ده مع ده يساوي ده. This disease, this diagnosis, this symptom equals this. It was a new world. It was a world of business. Through those experiences, little by little, I started to think, okay, can I make money from this? I realized you know, I could. Okay, could I help people? Yes, I could. It came to a point that I started to think that I was going to be, يعني, في راسي, in my mind, I was going to have buckets of money. I was walking around, هنا عشر ألف دولار, هنا عشرين ألف دولار. I was going to be a millionaire. I started to think about how I was going to spend my money. Driving the fast cars, the newest mobile phone. 
going to Tahiti, Bali, Hawaii for vacation. Buying my parents their dream cars. It came to a point, I know we actually went online عشان نشوف أسعار private planes. أنا كان حيكون عندي قروش قدر ده إنه نقدر نشتري طيارة. يلا. I was an entrepreneur في اللحظة دي. خلاص. Sudamed was born. تهينا. يلا. Every story of entrepreneurship في العالم whether they are billionaires today ولا cannot pay rent is the exact same. 18 hour days. Sleepless nights. Entrepreneurship fee quote. I love this quote, I use it all the time. Entrepreneurship is living a few years like nobody will to live the rest of your life like nobody can. I remember. I remember in one behind the sa seven PM Bakunli Samafatarta. I remember leaving the office every day. My mother, I did not see her for a week, two weeks. I remember the amount of people. 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 I remember the amount of people that gave me negative criticism. I remember the amount of days that I wanted to give up. I remember the amount of weeks that I, st- uh, that I actually spent in bed because I just don't want to go out. I'm depressed. I remember the friends that I gained. I remember the friends that I lost. I remember. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, with the support of my family and my friends, I didn't give up, even though I really did want to. The past two years have been the worst and the best of my life. Let's fast forward to today. Sudan Med Co. Limited is an established company in Sudan. Sudamed is registered in Sudan and the United Arab Emirates. We provide more than 16 services in five countries. Our medical directory, Zaman Dik, now gets 800 visits per day, 24,000 per month, to a point that we had to take it down and we are launching the new one in three weeks with a, med- with a mobile application and a mobile website. Sudamed has been internationally recognized. We have won two awards. The King Abdullah Award for Youth Innovation and Achievement, Jais al Malik Abdullah al Injaz al Ibda'a Shababi, and Social Entrepreneur of the Year in Germany. Guys. And now we are, be, we are in talks to being acquired in Dubai. I owe the success, pretty much, if you can call it success, of Sudamed to my family, my father, my mother, my sister, my friends that never gave up on me, my senior colleagues, and my mentors. I do not drive the fastest car. I, do not, I have not bought them their dream cars yet. I do not eat at the most luxurious places. I have not been to Tahiti, or Hawaii, or Bali. All of this, not because I do not have the means financially to do it. The rest. But this is the second part of my story. And this is something today that maybe my parents are the first time they hear it. Two years ago, around this time, as a family, we went through the hardest challenge that you could ever think of. The Laila Karima. We went through the hardest challenge that we could ever think of. Two years ago, my mother was diagnosed with second stage breast cancer. I am a doctor. My father is a doctor. We have seen countless patients. We know the statistics. We know what drug they give. We know what operation is done. We know this. We've read it. We've seen it. Medical school does not teach you how to deal with this patient when it's your mother. 
it doesn't teach you how to deal with it when it's your wife. I remember, they might not know this, but I remember the days that I actually cried myself to sleep. I remember the days when I begged God, when I prayed. I remember the day of the operation, I made a promise to God. My promise was, if you spare my mother, I will be, I will help people. I will do. I will, I will, I will. Alhamdulillah, shukrillah. My mother was spared. She is now one of the brave cancer survivors. And the advocate for breast awareness. I always had, shuhura jaya, I didn't do anything. I didn't know what to do. That, that promise of God, it was in the back of my head, but I didn't know what to do. What was I going to do? What difference was I going to make, really? And, and then I met Haj Ali. I was coming home from work about 1 a.m., 12 a.m. Tala Kubri Kobar. To my right, this man asked if I could drop him off. This thin man with a little bag. So I picked him up, and by the time I, was, I finished the bridge, I was laughing. This man was telling me the funniest stories in the world. We stopped. He told me just to drop him off here because his house was two blocks. Gulta Kamil, my good deed, and take him all the way home. Home. His home was a two by two cardboard box. In this two by two cardboard box, which is smaller than any of your rooms, lived him, his wife, his daughter, and four grandchildren. Al Kisa Sagir was their dinner. Kisra, one tomato, oil, and water. Ajwa. Halafne talag. Alay bit talag. Tanzil it asha maana. I'm at I had dinner. Hadar. I came down. I had just had dinner about two hours ago. And it was a almost 80, 90 Sudanese pound steak. And this was to me was normal. I've had it how many times, Yani? It, it was just a normal thing that I ate. When I started looking at the kid, I realized that what I just thought was normal was something that they have will never, ever, even dream of tasting. I went home, but the image was still in my head. Started thinking about was this one person? There's like millions of pe these people in Sudan. Okay. Today, Sudan Med has made a promise. 70% of our profits now go back to the Sudanese community. We are interested, we are interested in three aspects. Healthcare, education, youth empowerment, and entrepreneurship. Sudamed alhamdulillah today owns, runs, and funds with the help of a pharmaceutical company, the only free health clinic in Khartoum, where we, everything from medical consultation to lab tests to the medicines or the drugs are free. <laughs> Last month alone, we treated more than 1,000 patients. We have already started setting up with the help of a bank a school, a primary school in one of the poverty-stricken areas of Khartoum, where we deal with teaching in an eccentric, fun style. We have already set up our business hub project. It's still in the beginnings, where youth, just like me, can come with the idea, and we will help them through funding, through teaching, through skills, through mentoring, so that they can make so that they can one day come and stand here and tell their story. Ladies and gentlemen, success is not about how much money you make. Take for example, or actually think about the millions of people making millions of dollars every day. Now think about what happens when they go, when they die. Will you remember them in 10 years? Will you remember them in five, in one? My friend Hazm always says this word, 
success is about leaving a legacy. Do you think Gandhi was successful? Do you think Mother Teresa was successful? They died with nothing but the shirts on their back. But my children's children will know of Gandhi's wisdom and will know of Mother Teresa's kindness. People talk about Steve Jobs. Why do we remember Steve Jobs? We do not remember him because how many zeros he had in his bank account. No. Remember him because he was an innovator. He brought tomorrow's technology today. He gave us the future. So in closing, I want to tell you that whatever you think success is, this is my personal opinion, but always, and I am not, listen, I am not the brightest person, I am not the smartest person, uh, I, if I was an average student, so if I can do this in two years, imagine what, what each and every single one of you can do in two months. Always think about the smile that you can put on somebody's face. Think about how lucky you are and how lucky they're not, how unlucky they are. ولو لو قررت إنه تعمل لكم مصيبة زي أنا عملتها وتخش في الرول تاع الانتربرنور شيب ده ال one advice بالنسبة لكم أنا ممكن أديكم لو إنه be ready لأنه بجد it will be the journey of your lives. Thank you.